Hi, my name is Vanessa Voki. I'm a photographer, an artist, and a sewist from Canada, and today I'm going to be making a video about trans kids. But first off, let me start by showing you a little clip by Dr. Grande. So how do we define Munchausen syndrome by proxy? We see that the perpetrator, who is usually a parent or a caregiver to the victim, intentionally induces, falsifies, or over-exaggerates manifestations of physical or mental health symptoms in this other person. Now again, usually this other person is a child. So this disorder is actually a form of child abuse. Well, we know that 90% of the individuals who are diagnosed with this disorder are the biological mothers of the victims. We also see that the perpetrator is receptive to and may even take pleasure in a child receiving painful and invasive treatments. Jazz Jennings is a 20-year-old boy who was transed by his parents because he adored his older sister. Jazz first shared his story of being transgender when he was just six years old on ABC News. Jazz Jennings is one of the youngest documented cases of transitioning from male to female. Jazz quickly rose to fame and he was given a reality TV show on TLC. Jazz was like three-ish, four. She would want to go to school. Full dress as a girl. What does dressing as a girl mean? And I would say, you know what, Jazz, people are going to make fun of you. We have to put you in your boy clothes. So she was the one who put the idea in her son's head that he was going to be made fun of for dressing and acting out of sexist stereotypes. Made a part and I put the two ponytail holders in her hair. Why is she crying about putting her boy's hair in ponytails? Why is that like seen as an emotional thing? Isn't it just cute? And I said, I told her she looked like a beautiful little girl. She looked like a beautiful little boy with long hair. And I said, girls can do anything they want to do. But little boys can't like girly things, according to you. I just want her to be happy. The strutting towards the camera and the wink is creepy. She formed like a blister. Like, that's almost like a blood blister. This is basically like my worst nightmare. Now, all of a sudden, overnight, my vagina just like changed. He doesn't have a vagina. They did a surgery on his penis and tried to invert it into a hole that a man could have sex with. But instead, it just looked like the sutures were starting to spread and the color of the skin right along the edge of the wound, you want it to be nice and pink, but it was looking dusky, kind of bluish. That's not a vagina. I was pretty worried at that point. She separated a little bit on both sides, which again, we did kind of know was a possibility. Yeah. And there's the doctor admitting that while they knew that there could be complications following this unnecessary invasive procedure, they went ahead with it anyways. I'm worried about like her mental well-being. That doesn't sound very convincing. And her dilation. The minute she leaves my house, we have a dilation problem. When you don't have that watchful eye, they tend to go back to old patterns. Old patterns like not inserting a medical grade dilator into a surgical wound that they created in between their legs where their penis and testicles used to be. Those kind of old patterns. I have woken Jazz out of a dead sleep and taken the dilator and put the lubrication on it and said, here, you take this and you put it in your vagina. If not, I will. I will be so mad if she goes away to college and that thing seals up. I will bring her neck. Before we get into some of the other trans kid examples, Let's talk about fraternal birth order. Fraternal birth order has been correlated with male sexual orientation, with a significant volume of research finding that the more older brothers a male has from the same mother, the greater the probability he will have a homosexual orientation. The next network I'd like to shame is Netflix. They created a new television series of the Babysitter's Club featuring a little boy named Kai Shapley. I remember even thinking before Kai was three that I think this kid might be gay. Shortly after Kai turned two, friends and family were starting to notice his behavior. Living in Pearland, Texas, that meant we were getting a lot of sidelong glances and questions. Kai would only play with other girls and girls' toys. He said boys were gross. Family members were flat out asking me if this kid was gay. Googling conversion therapy and how can we implement these techniques at home. I was and am an active member of our local church and I didn't support or condone those living the LGBTQ lifestyle. That was just part of the Christian makeup I'd been brought up to believe. I knew I'd instill those same principles in my children. Really spanking her. 
So what's been the happiest part since mommy understood who you really are? Well, finally be, be, being able to wear panties. Online, I found a secret Facebook community of Christian moms of LGBTQ kids. It's a beautiful group with a combined total of more than 2,000 moms now. I found women who would pray with me and for me. I found a group of the least judgmental and loving Christian women I had ever met. They make me brave. I felt like I was armed with a new understanding of scripture. I had the support of other moms like me, who'd been through the same thing I was going through. So, translation, she found a Facebook group of other deranged moms with Munchausen by proxy syndrome who wanted to exploit their kids and were also homophobic and didn't want to have a gay kid. How were they treating you differently? Because I was never allowed to go to the girls' bathroom. As he shouldn't. So when you think about the word transgender, what do you see or what do you think about? I think about rainbows and cupcakes with smiles and roses. Yeah, that's what he thinks because he's a little kid. He doesn't realize that he's been set on a path that goes from puberty blockers to cross sex hormones to crazy surgeries that will change his body irreparably. Let the kid wear whatever underwear he wants to wear. So I write a blog called I Am Totally That Mom. If by that mom you mean Munchausen by proxy mom, correct. In the past few years, my blog has really uh, become more focused on our journey with a transgender child. Of course it has. She's noticed that having a trans kid is a gold mine. Um, as young as two or three, she gravitated to typically feminine things. She loved pink and sparkles and all things girly, and that was fine with us. Obviously it wasn't. We were faced with a seven-year-old kid who wanted to die. One time she punched out the screen in her second story window and tried to jump out. I spent probably a couple hours trying to find some statistics on kids committing suicide under 10 years old. And it's like so ridiculously rare that there's no studies or statistics on it. So I'm going to call bullshit on this story. I think this is just emotional manipulation to get people to feel sorry for her. I was a girl because I liked the color pink and I liked girls' clothes and how they wore their hair and stuff. That doesn't make him a girl. That's a boy who likes the color pink. Don't you see how sexist this is? When she told me, I didn't believe her. I was shocked. And she and I was like, I don't believe you, that is not true. For Rebecca, the first steps will be puberty blockers, which will pause puberty. And so she would take estrogen to develop and go through female puberty. It honestly weirds me out that he's wearing the girl's leotard. Male ballerinas do exist, they're called ballerinos, and they wear t-shirts and leggings. Also, ever heard of Billy Elliot? At 10, she isn't mature enough to make this decision. This decision was forced on her by her parents. This is a form of abuse not recognized. Parents forming their child into a social media spotlight seeking their 15 minutes of fame. And luckily, every major medical organization says otherwise. Luckily, that's the key word here, I think. Luckily, all of these institutions are supporting her in abusing her child. And next up, let's talk about HBO's documentary, Transhood, which followed several trans kids for a couple years into their transition process. I've done too much in this world. It's ruined my life enough. And if I sell my book, it's gonna go on the news for like, with, along with me for like the 50th time at this point. And it's just gonna make my life worse. That already in itself is pretty disturbing. You hear the kids saying, I didn't want this. I don't want this. I don't want people to talk about me. I don't wanna be famous. I don't wanna be a celebrity. It's ruining my life. The next clip is of a little girl getting her hormone blockers shot. What's gonna help you, okay? Three, two, one. Ah, where's parts <laughs> Breathe, done? breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Where's parts done? Ah, done. <laughs> I think if you're still young enough that you get emotional and scared by needles, you're too young to make a decision about irreparably changing your body. See, that's all it is. You think you can handle that? But that's not all. It's not just Netflix and HBO and TLC. If you scroll on Instagram under the hashtag trans kids, you see thousands of other kids that are being put on display on the internet. And then there's that infamous TED talk by Susie Green, the spokesperson for Mermaids, a charity for trans youth whose son Jack 
was traumatized by his homophobic father who threw out all of his favorite girly toys. Can you spot the difference? Gypsy Rose Blanchard grew up with her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, making claims about her health that resulted in a series of dire diagnoses and medical interventions. However, Gypsy wasn't actually unwell. Her mother had been lying about her symptoms. Experts believe Dee Dee's behavior stemmed from the mental disorder Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Because Dee Dee wanted to be a caretaker, she feigned an induced illness in her daughter. The truth about Gypsy and her mother only came out after Gypsy arranged for an online boyfriend to murder Dee Dee in 2015. These parents who are homophobic and exploiting their kids for fame and attention are not good parents. The networks that are presenting these stories and presenting these parents as good parents are lying to you. Putting kids on experimental drugs should never be normalized. Telling kids they are born in the wrong body should never be normalized. Converting gay kids into straight adults should never be normalized. Iran is one of a handful of countries where homosexual acts are punishable by death. Clerics do, however, accept the idea that a person may be trapped in a body of the wrong sex. Homosexuals can be pushed into having gender reassignment surgery, and to avoid it, many flee the country. So a lot of people in Iran are pressured into transitioning because if they don't, they'll be killed. If you are silent while kids are being exploited and experimented on and mutilated, you are part of the problem too.